So now we're looking at the internal anatomy of this grass frog. We'll start at the anterior end of the animal and work our way down. So the first thing that we'll note, sort of just below the throat here, is this roundish muscular object up here. This is of course the heart. Directly below the heart, we find multiple lobes of this sort of dark colored structure here. This is the liver. Okay, again, one of the biggest organs in the body is usually the liver. So the liver produces bile, which is involved in the breakdown of fats. And bile gets stored in its own little pouch. This is it right here. That's called the gallbladder. Usually has sort of a greenish kind of a color, and it's as closely associated with the liver. If we lift up sort of the liver and these other structures here, we should be able to see this sort of uh, spongy looking structure here and we should be able to find another one on the other side right here okay these are the lungs um, in this animal they're actually pretty large they're a little bit stretched but compared to the size of the animal um, they're not particularly big you'll recall that frogs are skin breathers as are most amphibians and so they don't really need very big lungs. Um, they can absorb oxygen quite efficiently through their skin. But those are the lungs on either side there. Now this big sac that I had to move out of the way here, you can see how its point of attachment is up here. Of course, um, when the animal eats, mouth, or food enters the mouth, goes down the pharynx, into the esophagus, and then comes into the stomach, which is the structure that we can see right here. The structure, the stomach then narrows and becomes the coils of small intestine. Okay, so there's some of the coils there. We can see more coils wrapping around the side over here. And those coils of intestine are attached by this membranous structure here called mesentery. The mesentery is highly vascularized, containing blood vessels that both bring oxygen to the intestines, but also absorb all of the nutrients that are being released through the intestines of, or the, the wall of the small intestines. Okay. Um, there is another structure we can see in this area, and it's usually found in the mesentery in the junction between the stomach and the first coil of small intestine. So in this area here, and I have been able to find it, this little very inconspicuous looking sort of uh, long tongue shaped structure, this is the pancreas. Okay, so again, that's, produ that's involved in producing um, enzymes for digestion. So that was the pancreas. So let's follow down the small intestine until we get to the point where right here it narrows or sorry it widens very drastically. We can see a marked difference here between the two. So this was small intestine, this is now the large intestine here. So while the small intestine is the surface uh, provides the surface area for nutrient absorption. The um, large intestine is the place where water is absorbed out of the contents of the intestine, leaving basically solid uh, fecal material, which then gets passed out in this animal through what's called the cloaca, which is the single opening at the posterior end of the animal. Now, um, moving along, I will point out that this animal is definitely a female. Um, you may have noticed when I lifted this up that there was a fairly large mass of this sort of black and pale speckled material here. We'll find the same thing on the other side of the animal here. Okay, those are eggs essentially. So those are the eggs contained in the ovaries of this animal. And these are, are not very impressive. In some animals we've seen, they really fill the entire body cavity, but those are the eggs. And then there are some small coils lying beneath those right here. They're very long. Um, and these are the coils of the oviduct. Okay, so that's where eggs pass through to the external part of the body, obviously, again, through the cloaca, that single opening. Um, let's have a look at the male because we don't have these eggs in the way, we'll be able to see a few things a little bit better. So this is the male. Uh, right now it looks a lot like the female. We can see the little heart here, the lobes of the liver, the, uh, the gallbladder, the little bag underneath. We can see the large stomach, a little bit of the, the lung on one side right here. 
the stomach of course narrowing into the coils of small intestine and then that broadening into in this case a very large large intestine right here now we can see a few other structures now that we don't have things like um, eggs and oviducts in the way. The first thing that you might notice is this little bag right here, this little sort of ball shaped sac hanging out in the mesentery near the large intestine. That's the spleen. So this is the site of uh, red blood cell uh, production and storage. Okay, And then there's another little round structure just to one side of it this little white one here, this is one of the testes. So this is the male reproductive organ that we would be looking for. Okay, so that's the site of sperm storage or in production. Okay, now these guys don't really have um, a proper separate sperm duct the way we've seen in some other animals. Instead, um, the testes are connected to the same tube as the kidneys, which lie just underneath this brownish lobe right here is the kidney, okay? Those two share a single duct, which then allow either urine or sperm to pass down out to the cloaca at the rear, okay? Um, the other thing that you might notice, just to the side here, I'll try and point them out, you might be able to see these little white squiggly lines right here. There we go. Um, these little guys, they look an awful lot like the oviducts, um, and they are in fact a vestigial oviduct. Vestigial meaning um, not used, essentially. Um, so this is an organ that really serves no purpose in the male. It's a bit of a, a bit of a developmental throwback, okay? So those are not involved in the passage of sperm at all. Those are simply vestigial oviducts.